Can you wrap it? Yeah. Wrap, both hands. Wrap, wrap. Good job. Okay, ready? Here, take this. As many of you know, you can use almost anything when you're teaching a preschooler. As long as you're focusing in on that gross motor skills, fine motor skills, communication, language, speech, literacy, pre-writing, routine, safety, all that kind of stuff. Really, you can use almost anything. Now, I have spent a lot, a lot of time looking at a lot of different resources and buying a lot of resources for my daughter, Naomi. Now, if this is the first time you've been here and you just kind of clicked on my thumbnail because you thought it looked kind of cool, well, let me tell you who I am. My name is Leilani. I am a former public and private school teacher. I do homeschool evaluations for the state of Florida, and my youngest daughter has Down syndrome. And on this channel, I like to share with you my journey as I am raising her and teaching her, as well as my three other kids because I'm learning right along with them too as a homeschool parent. That's, it is, it's different than being a public school teacher. This subscription box that I am showing you is called Little Passports, which you probably have heard of. We do the Early Explorers edition. My daughter is four years old, but developmentally she's two, but we still use the preschool one because I do want her to grow into that. When you open up the little passports box, you are gonna get an activity book. It comes with some stickers that you can put on her suitcase and on the map that they seem to be weaving through all the boxes. And it comes with an age-appropriate activity. And in this case, it's going to really, really encourage creative play. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Can I try? Oh yeah, I can even put it in my mouth. We first started with the little activity booklet. Usually I let her pick. Today she didn't seem to care, so we just kind of went with the activity book. Which yeah, one's look. different? Which yeah. one's different? That's full, full. Uh-oh, there's a hole in that oh, one. Oh no. So can we circle that one? And I kept going until she got bored. Usually when she gets bored, what I try to do is have her do one more thing with that activity and then teach her the routine of cleaning up. So the first activity was matching. And basically what I do with her here is just talk it out. I have no plan, I have no idea what I'm gonna say next, I just brain dump on her. Do we use, what do we use a fork with? Where does that, does that go here, here, or here? That's sushi. But look, does it fork with this or with this? I brain dump what I'm thinking in the language that I think she will understand the best. Now, she is learning the concept of matching slowly, but surely she is learning, but she, she does understand. She understands a lot more than she appears to understand. Then I present her with a pencil. Now, I'm not really sure yet what hand she writes with, left or right, so I present it to her right in the middle. Usually around age two or three developmentally, they make that decision, but she hasn't yet. She may actually be ambidextrous. We, that's something the therapist actually said might actually happen. So we'll see. We are working on her grip. It's not perfect, but it's a work in progress and there are some steps that we are following. I also want to encourage her to scribble. Now I'll be completely honest, she is not a fan of writing or coloring, she doesn't like it at all. Well, most of the time, we'll have moments where she does, but most of the time. So when she does it, I am all about letting her do it. I'm not gonna take her away from that activity, I'm just gonna let her keep going. And of course, I always like to read the instructions and I point to each word as I read it out loud. And that's not because I expect her to be reading at this age. What I expect her to do though, is to understand that every single word has meaning that simple. Also, that there is that left to right sweeping motion when you're reading a book. No. All right, you gotta reach in and you gotta pull it out. No. That is definitely one way to do it. Now this kit came with some felt food making stuff. And it actually came with a menu that you can open up and pick what you wanna do. I let her pick out what she wanted to do first. All right, you tell me which one you want to make. Which one do you want to make? Do you want to make a, something in Korean? Pizza? Taco? Crepe? 
cheeseburger or sushi? Wait. Which one do you want to do, Naomi? Yeah. You want to make a sushi? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna follow this. <laughs> we're gonna follow this. Okay. And it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Choices. A side note, someone did mention in the comments that I read, like all the time, so make sure you leave one, that I should get her siblings more involved with her. And I do that, I do that. Mm. So we have to find the sushi roll. Where's the sushi? Oh, yeah. does Hannah want to make one too while uh -huh. we do this? Okay, uh, here's how the... How about do two sushis, Mommy? There are two sushis. So I'm gonna I can do apart. one and I can, Naomi can do one. Okay. Plan? No. All right, here's the sushi. But the struggle that I have sometimes is that her siblings start to take over the activity. So sometimes I purposely leave the siblings out. But in this case, it was perfect to have the sibling involved, her sister. And there was actually an option for her to uh, also build one with her, which was kind of super cool. Stack the ingredients at the bottom of the rice. Oh, we gotta get rice. This is the rice. And Look, yeah. it has like French. Can you feel yeah. that? Oh, you yeah. wanna pull yours out? Yeah. Okay. And they also teach each other regularly, which I highly, highly encourage. It teaches them to have patience as well as uh, they start to understand the concept even more because they're teaching it. That is statistically proven. That's why teachers are so crazy smart and homeschool parents are even smarter. Another thing I really like about having sibling involvement is that it opens this up for sharing. What's this? Ella. What is it? No. Tomato. Tomato. Mommy. That's a hard one. No. Uh, no. No, let her do it. <clears throat> How do you want to make your sandwich? Pickle. Yeah, can I do one? Oh, no. Hannah, let her do it. Oh, that was nice of you, Naomi. No. Thank you. All right, you put it on. Good job. Can Hannah close it? Uh, no. Now what do you do? <laughs> you made the cheeseburger. You don't want to eat it. Oh. Mm. Nom, nom, I nom. wish there was a drink. Feel the fringe. Look, Naomi, look. Can you feel that? No. Nice. Can I feel? The one thing I also really loved about using the felt kit was the textures. Now texture is a really, really big deal for those preschoolers. Anybody who has sensory processing disorder or autism, even ADHD, and of course Down syndrome. Textures, they don't always like feeling textures, so if you can kind of force it on them and get them feeling that, get them used to feeling it so they can cope better when they do feel it unexpectedly. So can you put the tuna at the bottom? Tuna? Felt in general is kind of a unique texture because it's soft, not hard, and it's flexible and also durable. Okay. Alright, can you help me wrap? Look, look, look. Naomi, can you wrap it? Wrap, both hands. Wrap, wrap. Good job. Okay, ready? Here, take this. Okay. <laughs> All right, you want to do the pizza? All right, you got to take a bite. What is it? No. Oh, wait, it's another pizza. pizza. Wait, you made two of each one? With everything that we do, I always like to work with her on her words because her speech, of all things, is the lowest. The fresh, fresh mozzarella cheese. Cheese? Cheese. All right, here's yours and here's Hannah's. And of course, what better motivation to give them than with food, even, even if it is felt. Yay. All right, can you put it right in the middle? Mm. Oh. <laughs> we'll eat that with son. Here, you can have this. Okay, mm. Naomi, here's tomatoes. No. Do you like the tomatoes? No. All right, here you go. Put it on, tomatoes. I only see one. But you know what you have to have, Naomi? Salad. Put no. the leaf on there. Yeah, that's the best I only part. Got one. Of course, we love pretend play. Who doesn't love pretend play? And we can use words, you know, like chef and voila, and we can pull this out. And do, you know, pretend play is huge. Pretend play is huge. Okay, so we're gonna be all done. Okay, so can we put all the food away inside this here? This is really cool. 
Cleanup is also a super important part, not just because I'm OCD about having my house clean, but because it's teaching her good habits, it's teaching her fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination, and uh, how to make mommy happy. And she actually likes to clean, which is kind of cool. It makes her feel like a big girl. I don't mind if she wants to wipe down the kitchen counter or sweep, try to sweep. I let her try to sleep, even if it's not perfect. They're trying. Oh, we got a book, Jojo and the Food Fight. Whoa. So we got Look Out for Jojo. It's a bird monkey. It's monkey, Jojo the monkey. Good job. We also got a book with the Little Passports subscription box. And I love books, I like having books with themes in it, I love reading it, pointing out the pictures, just we are a book family. And I think of all things that you can possibly use to help educate any child, whether they have Down syndrome, autism, sensory processing disorder, ADHD, or none, they're absolutely fine, is books. Books teach almost everything. It's way better than a tablet by far. And it can communicate things to them that just words can't. What is this? Oh no! But yeah, he's gonna slip on the banana. Oh, oh no! no. As always when I'm reading the books, I'm doing the same exact things. The sweeping, the pointing, you know, making sure that she sees their meaning behind words. We talk about the pictures, we talk about the colors, the usual. Where's the banana? Hello! No. No. Is it on his head? On the ha head? It's like a banana. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know she's super cute, but leave me a comment down below if you have any questions about how we're doing things. And if you kind of like what I'm doing with these videos where I'm sharing with you what it actually looks like in our home and what's going on in the back of my mind and what I'm learning as we're doing this journey, let me know if you like this style. My name is Leilani, and I'm gonna stick some videos around my face right now to let you know what videos you might like if you waited till the end of this one. So, um, yeah. I will see you guys in our next video. Bye.